Hello students, welcome to grade 12 chemistry revision lesson on entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. In our today's lesson, we will learn about entropy and entropy change, the second law of thermodynamics, free energy and free energy changes. At the end of this topic, you will be able to define entropy and entropy change. Calculate entropy change. State the second law of thermodynamics. Define free energy and free energy change. Calculate the standard free energy change. Describe the relationship between standard Gibbs free energy change, standard enthalpy change and standard entropy change of a reaction. Students, if you are ready, then we will get started. Entropy and entropy change. Entropy is denoted by capital S and entropy change denoted by the symbol delta S, entropy change. Entropy is defined as it is a measure of the degree of randomness or disorder of a system. Entropy is a measure of the degree of randomness, degree of randomness or disorder of a system. The greater the randomness or disorder in a system, the highest it is entropy. The entropy change delta S is the measure of the increase if delta S is greater than zero or decrease if delta S is less than zero in disorder of a system that undergoes a change. The change can be physical change or chemical change. That means chemical reaction. Examples. Decide whether the following becomes ordered or disordered. A. Solids melt to liquid. This process is disordered. Therefore, change in entropy disordered. Disordered. Change in entropy delta S is greater than zero. The sign of delta S is positive. B. Spreading of perfume in a room. Now this process is disordered. 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 Delta S for this process is greater than zero. The sign of delta S is positive. Repairing a broken radio. Now this is ordered. Ordered. Change in entropy. Delta S is less than zero. The sign of delta S is negative. Solids or liquids dissolve in a solvent to form solution. Again, this process is disordered. The change in entropy, delta S is greater than zero. Sublimation of naphthalene, disordered. Delta S is greater than zero. Explosion of nitroglycerin, disordered. Change in entropy, delta S is greater than zero. And the sign of delta S is positive. Therefore, entropy is the measure of degree of randomness or disorder of a system that undergoes a change. The entropy change delta S for a chemical change is equal to the sum of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropies of the reactants. For reactions of the type A, A plus BB to form C plus D. The change in entropy, standard entropy change, delta S naught of this reaction equal C times molar entropy of C plus D times molar entropy of D minus A times molar entropy of M minus B times molar entropy of B. If delta S for this reaction is greater than zero, now, there is an increase in disorder of the process. 
Delta S greater than zero indicates an increase in randomness or disorder during the change. Delta S less than zero indicates a decrease in randomness or an increase in order. For example, hydrogen gas react with oxygen gas to form water. Molar entropy of hydrogen is 135.57 joule per Kelvin. Note that the SI unit of entropy is joule per Kelvin. Molar entropy of oxygen is 205. Molar entropy of water is 69.91 joule per Kelvin mole. And temperature is 298 Kelvin. What is S? The change in entropy delta S for this reaction, for the given reaction, equal two times molar entropy of water, two times molar entropy of water, minus two times molar entropy of hydrogen, minus one times molar entropy of oxygen, equal two times molar entropy of water is 69.91, 69.91 joule per Kelvin, joule per Kelvin. Mole will be cancelled by mole. Minus two times molar entropy of hydrogen is 135, 135.57 joule per Kelvin. Minus molar entropy of oxygen is 205. 205 joule per Kelvin. Now this gives minus 36.35 joule per Kelvin. It's negative. Entropy change delta S is less than zero. You see the change from gas to liquid. The second law of thermodynamics the connection between entropy and the spontaneity of a reaction is expressed by the second law of thermodynamics, which states the entropy of the universe increases in a spontaneous process and remains unchanged in an equilibrium process. The second law of thermodynamics states any spontaneous change that occurs in the universe must be accompanied by an increase in the entropy of the universe. That means Change in entropy of the universe, delta S of the universe, universe equal change in total entropy, total, total equal change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surrounding, greater than zero. According to the second law of thermodynamics, if total entropy change, total entropy change is greater than zero, then the process is spontaneous process. Note that there is no cut criteria for the sign of entropy of the system and entropy of the surrounding, as long as total entropy change is greater than zero. Therefore, if total entropy change is greater than zero, then the process is spontaneous process. If total entropy change is less than zero, the process is non-spontaneous. If total entropy change equals zero, then the process is equilibrium. We can write this as entropy total, delta S, total, total entropy change equal, change in entropy of the system, delta S of the system, minus change in entropy of the surrounding is directly proportional to enthalpy of the system delta h but inversely proportional to kelvin temperature t greater than 0 this is the second law of thermodynamics free energy and free energy changes free energy denoted by the symbol G, capital G, and free energy change denoted by delta G. A new quantity that tells us whether a reaction will be spontaneous was first developed by the American mathematician J. Willard Gibbs. He proposed a new state function now called the Gibbs free energy change or just free energy designated by G. 
the Gibbs free energy change enables us to know whether a given reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. The Gibbs free energy change relates enthalpy change and entropy change through this equation. Delta G equal delta H minus T times delta S. Note that from the second law of thermodynamics, we have this total entropy change, delta S, delta S total, equal change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surrounding, equal change in entropy of the system, system minus change in entropy of the surrounding is delta H divided by temperature, equal total entropy change, total. If you multiply both sides by temperature, multiply both sides by temperature, temperature. Now, T times delta S total equal delta S of the system minus delta H. This will be cancelled by this. This become temperature. Therefore, this is the same as T times delta S of total, total equal Temperature, T times delta S of the system minus delta H. Now multiply both sides by negative 1. Now this become minus. This become minus T times delta S plus delta H. Minus T times change in total entropy change is the Gibbs free energy change denoted by the symbol delta G. Delta G equal delta H minus T times delta S of the system, which enables us to know whether the given reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. If the Gibbs free energy change delta G is less than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous reaction. If delta G is greater than zero, the given reaction is non-spontaneous. If delta G equal zero, the reaction is equilibrium reaction. The following can be summarized for delta G equal delta H minus T times delta S. One, for a change in which delta H less than zero and delta S greater than zero, the change in Gibbs free energy change becomes less than zero. Delta G is less than zero and the process is spontaneous. We said the Gibbs free energy change delta G relates delta H with entropy through this equation, T times delta S. Here it says delta H less than zero is negative, delta H negative, minus delta H. Delta S greater than zero is positive, positive times negative is negative, minus T times delta S. Negative plus negative is always negative. Therefore, the Gibbs free energy change delta G is less than zero for all temperature. Two. If delta H is greater than zero, delta G, delta G equal delta H minus T times delta S. If delta H is greater than zero, it's positive, delta H, delta H. And delta S is less than zero, negative, change in entropy. Negative times negative is positive, plus T times delta S. Now this is always positive for all temperature. Therefore, the Gibbs free energy change delta G is greater than zero. And the process is non-spontaneous. Three, if delta H is greater than zero, delta H greater than zero, and delta S greater than zero, delta G may or may not be negative, but only if delta H is less than T times delta S, delta G less than zero. For if delta H is less than zero, negative, and delta S less than zero, negative, negative, positive, delta G is less than zero if T times delta S is small. This occurs at small values of temperature. For the reaction AA plus BB to form CC plus DD, the standard Gibbs free energy change for this reaction, delta G notes of the reaction equal C times Delta G naught formation, delta G naught formation of C plus D times delta G naught formation of D minus 
A times delta G naught formation of M minus B times delta G naught formation of B. Note that the standard Gibbs free energy change for an element is zero. For example, calculate the standard free energy change for the reaction. Silver sulfide plus water gives silver plus hydrogen sulfide plus oxygen. Standard molar free energies of formation of silver sulfide is 40.7 kilojoule. For water, minus 237.2 and for hydrogen sulfide, minus 33.6 kilojoule per mole. You are asked to calculate the standard Gibbs free energy change for this reaction. Now, delta G naught, delta G naught of the reaction equal, equal four times delta G naught formation of silver is zero because the standard Gibbs free energy change of an element is zero. Plus two times, two times, Delta G naught formation of hydrogen sulfide is minus 33, minus 33.6 kilojoule, kilojoule. Plus one times delta G naught formation of oxygen is zero. Minus two times, minus two times delta G naught formation of silver sulfide is minus 40.7, minus 40.7 kilojoule minus two times delta G naught formation of water is minus 237.2, minus 237.2 kilojoule. Now this is delta G naught of the reaction. The standard Gibbs free energy change for this reaction is plus 488.6 kilojoule. You see? Delta G naught is greater than zero. Show that this reaction is non-spontaneous. The reverse process is spontaneous. Students, let us practice this exercise. You have three minutes.
Good. Let us do together. Given the following, delta H and delta S values determine the temperature at which these reactions would be spontaneous. M, delta H equal 10.5 kilojoule, delta S equal 13 joule per Kelvin. For what temperature this reaction would be spontaneous? We said the Gibbs free energy change, delta G relates, enthalpy change and entropy change through this equation, delta H minus T times delta S. Now delta H is positive, delta S is positive. If the reaction is spontaneous reaction, delta G must be less than zero, less than zero. This is the same as delta H is less than T times delta S. T times delta S is greater than delta H. For T greater than delta H over delta S, this reaction would be spontaneous. For T greater than, for temperature greater than, delta H is 10.5 kilo, 10 Point 0.5 kilo is 10 to the power of 3, 10 raised to 3 joule divided by change in entropy. Delta S is 13 joule per Kelvin. 13 joule per Kelvin. Joule will be cancelled by joule. We are left with Kelvin, which is the units of temperature. Therefore, for T greater than 10.5 times 10 raised to 3 divided by 13 Kelvin, this reaction would be spontaneous. B, delta H 1.8 kilo joule, delta S 113 joule per Kelvin. For what temperature this reaction would be spontaneous? Again, delta G, delta G equal delta H minus T times delta S. Delta H is positive, delta S is also positive. For this reaction to be spontaneous, the Gibbs free energy change, delta G must be less than zero, less than zero. We can write this as delta H is less than T times delta S. Or T times delta S is greater than delta H. For T greater than delta H divided by delta S, this reaction would be spontaneous. For T greater than, greater than delta H is 1.8 kilo, 1.8 kilo is 10 raised to 3 joule divided by delta S is 113, 113 joule per Kelvin, joule will be cancelled by joule. For T greater than this, this reaction would be spontaneous. Sim delta H, delta H minus 11.7 kilo joule. Delta S is minus 105 joule per Kelvin. For what temperature this reaction would be spontaneous? Again, the Gibbs free energy change, delta G, equal delta H minus T times delta S. Now the sign of delta H is negative. This is negative, minus delta H, minus delta H. Delta S is also negative. Negative times negative is positive, plus T times delta S, T times delta S. For this reaction to be spontaneous, the Gibbs free energy change, delta G must be less than zero, less than zero. Multiply both sides by negative one. We can write this as delta H minus T times delta S is greater than zero. For delta H greater than T times delta S, Delta H is greater than T times delta S, or T times delta S is less than delta H. Therefore, for temperature, for T, less than delta H divided by delta S, this reaction would be spontaneous. Delta H, for temperature, less than delta H, is minus 11.7, minus 11.7 kilo joule, 10 to the power of 3 joule divided by Delta S is minus 105, minus 105 joule per Kelvin. This reaction would be spontaneous. Good. Students, in our today's lesson, 
we discussed entropy. Entropy is the measure of the degree of randomness or disorder of a system. The second law of thermodynamics states the entropy of the universe increases in a spontaneous process and remains unchanged in an equilibrium process. If total entropy change is greater than zero, then the process is spontaneous process. We learned free energy and free energy change. The Gibbs free energy change enables us to know whether the given reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. If the Gibbs free energy change is less than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous reaction. If it is greater than zero, the reaction is non-spontaneous reaction. If delta G equals zero, the reaction is equilibrium reaction. This brings us to the end of our today's lesson. Until next time, goodbye.